Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today, I'm very excited to kick off episode one of our new critique series that we will be bringing here to my YouTube channel. This series is going to consist of people that are looking for artistic insight so that way they can go ahead and better their tattooing on their end. I'm not here to discourage anybody. I'm not here to provide any negativity and tell you that you shouldn't be tattooing. I'm not here to go down that road. Uh, I do automatically assume that everyone is practicing safe tattooing i assume that everyone is you know abiding by specific rules that they would follow upon tattooing to do safe tattoos whether or not you or an individual is doing safe tattooing is well out of my capabilities and or capabilities of controlling rather so i'm not here to promote unsafe tattooing either as well so there's just a few things that i do want to point out this doesn't make me a better tattooist than you this doesn't necessarily mean that this is the right way to do a tattoo or the wrong way to do a tattoo or anything like that nor do i can condone unsafe tattooing with that being said the idea behind the critique series is those who are looking for genuine creative insight on their work would submit it i would make these videos and then i would shed light right here in real time with you all as you can see right here, we have 10 submissions. I'm going to go ahead and do the first submission. I'm gonna work my way down the list right here. This rose was done from a follow along episode by a person named Christopher Daly, Daily Christopher. I can't be too sure if that's backwards. Uh, the email was submitted as Daily Christopher. However, let's just begin and dive straight on into this. I want to shed some light here. Overall, the tattoo reads well. I do um, like the rose. It's definitely not a bad tattoo, however, if we zoom in right here, which we had the opportunity to do on this iPad, what I would do is we would want to simply touch some of these up like so. And to do that is you can use the same needle configuration that you were using. And I would recommend kind of working on my hand speed. Typically when we're getting spaces with the needle like that or the needle's not saturating evenly, it's going to be a combination of many different things. It could be that the tattooist may not be used to the gear, uh, various things like that. I'm just gonna list off some common reasons. Uh, it could be that the hand speed and voltage aren't matching with, with one another. So basically when uh, the hand speed and voltage don't match, this is basically what we get right here, this line right here. So this essentially is in the epidermis. So upon healing, all of this side right here would have fell out and then only this would have stayed. So the line would have had like a form to it. It wouldn't have been one consistent flow. Over here, the needle showing right there, the needle streak, that just shows the depth wasn't deep enough. So when we're pulling lines, we want to consider multiple variables. It's not something that we want to rush. So I would recommend going back and even over this exact same rose that I'm critiquing right now, you use this exact same rose. And if you blow out the skin, luckily it's uh, fake skin, so you don't have to worry. And I would recommend recommend going back over and working on the hand speed and the voltage, finding a comfortable hand speed and a comfortable voltage is what I would recommend practicing or working on and getting that flow down to where you feel super comfortable with it. I can't say that you're gonna have to pull a line at this speed or pull this line at this speed with this voltage because I don't know what setup you're using. I don't know what needles you're using. By the looks of it, this looks like an 11 round liner or a bigger configuration here. But again, I can't be too sure. Now, as you see, what I am doing is I'm cleaning up the rows here. And when you, why I recommend it to go back and work on the hand speed and voltage and the depth is so that you can fill out these lines and get them really nice and bold and saturated first pass. Even if you have to go over a couple of times, on fake skin, I give myself three passes to work one spot and then I won't go back over it. It's just the way that I practice. But as you see right here, these little cleanups that I'm doing make all the difference and make for better reading of this tattoo right here. And again, you didn't do anything wrong. I'm not saying that this is a bad tattoo, nothing like that. This is just simply the way that I would have approached doing this tattoo or even now how I would go back and approach it like so. But overall, 
as you can see, I cleaned up some of the spots and the spots that I have cleaned up are reflecting in the work. The shading, I love how you shaded it in there. The shading is in cool spots. I also recommend to kind of figure out your own gray wash, you know, get comfortable with making your own gray wash system and then applying that again. So going back, even if you want to get the same rows and then put it down, practice aligning, find a comfortable speed, find a comfortable voltage and work on depth and keeping these three consistent throughout each and every line that you pull. And then also find a good gray wash system that you are comfortable with and then go back and retry it. I guarantee you each time that you try this rose is going to get better and better and better. With that being said, well done. I definitely appreciate your submission. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next one was submitted by Larry Aviles, and forgive me if I pronounce anyone's name incorrectly. And as you can see, this is a rose right here as well from the follow along. So what I'm going to do is we're going to approach it the exact same way. Now, right here, now how I would approach it is cleaning up these lines right here, again, is a way to go. And pretty much the same thing as I stated to Christopher Daly, where you would simply want to work on the voltage and hand speed, or not work on that, that's basically what we would want to do is find a comfortable hand speed and voltage. I'm not sure, again, if you're using coils or if you're using a rotary machine or a pin style machine, it varies. It can, you know, be all of the above. I, I don't know. But overall, though, it's not a bad tattoo. I do recommend that we would work on the line work find a comfortable hand speed and voltage. This looks like the rubber felt fake skin, if I'm correct. So that does also reflect the lines. So that lines aren't truly accurate because that rubber felt skin feels like a pencil eraser. So it feels a bit more soft. And as you see, cleaning these lines up specific, it's starting to take form there and it really reflects on the art. And as you see right here, like lines right here, this right here is a big issue for me. If I, even if I do this in a tattoo now and I see it after the tattoo is healed, I will definitely offer that person a pretty much a free touch up for them to come back and allow me to touch up the tattoo accordingly because that's just one of my issues. I mean, one of my, I guess, pet peeves in tattooing. I want everything to be as pristine as I can get it. And as you see though, that's all that I'm doing. I'm just simply going over these areas and bolting out the lines. And then from right here to right here, this area too. So overall, just cleaning the lines up and you can even use this same rubber skin that you use or this same practice skin and do the exact same thing. Just find a comfortable hand speed because as you see right here, the depth came out too early. So you can see that within the lines. So practice on getting comfortable, find a comfortable hand speed and find comfortable motions from A to B that you are comfortable with. That's how I will basically approach that. And as you see though, when you start pulling more smooth and cleaner lines, it, def it definitely reflects in the work. And again, this is, I believe, a rubber felt fake skin, if I'm correct. So the lines are only gonna be so accurate. But overall, great tattoo. The gray wash shading, I do recommend, I'm sorry, the shading, I do also recommend finding a good gray wash system that you are comfortable with to shade with. I do like that you're following the form right here just i would simply work on the voltage the voltage seems like it may have been a little too high with what you're working with and if i'm correct as you see right here the configuration was definitely a bit thicker than a three round liner if i am reading this correctly that is basically how i would go ahead and approach that i genuinely appreciate your submission thank you very very much and i hope that i can shed some light for you should you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments down below and this goes for anyone that's watching or the people that i'm actually critiquing here by all means don't hesitate to drop comments below and i'm going to do my best to assist you here um for the shading though as well one thing that i would also like to touch base on is i would recommend for shading working on the form a bit more and for this specific needle configuration it may be hard to get into areas like this so that's why i approach approach shading with a three round liner so i can get into tight spaces like that overall though i do like how you worked with the space that you had with what you had also you know good job as you can see right here, the lines go a little bit 
you know, crazy there, which is simply practice and that just takes time to correct. And, you know, I still sometimes tend to do that. And I tend to do that when my my position upon pulling the line wasn't comfortable from the jump. So I always make sure that I'm comfortable. I always know my A to B and then I pull the lines. When I'm comfortable and I pull my A to B, I'm a lot more, uh, I'm a lot less prone to, you know, wobbling on my lines there. But again, I genuinely appreciate your submission. Should you have any questions, drop them down below. The next one was on skin right here. And I cut out the backgrounds for you all just out of respect for the people submitting here. As you can see, this is a more traditional style of tattoo. I do like the design. Let me see if I can match color here. Now, how I would approach this is this is overall great. I don't see any blowouts that are apparent or anything negative like that. Maybe in this area right here a little bit. But that may have been due to uh, coming over here, then coming over here. So either way, though, overall, it's a great tattoo. And again, I'm not condoning uh, any unsafe tattooing. This is just me relaying an artistic, creative spirit. Maybe a little bit of blowouts right here as well. This is why I do recommend practicing on fake skin. However, for this, I would just simply touch up the lines that didn't come out. like the other lines as you see, something like that. And then over here as well, as you see, you can see the shader streaks right here. I will close that off or fine tune that. And this is just me. You may wanna be careful right here in this area so that we don't blow this out, but I would have connected that. And it's just minor little things. Overall though, this is a cool design. I do like this style of rose. I don't see it often, so that's pretty cool. And then as you see right here, this was a taper in and out. So I'm assuming it went from here to here and then from this way to this way. I'm not sure how that was pulled, but that's what that looks like. And again, there's a little bit of, you know, or there's not a little bit, but that is definitely blown out there. So this is just, you know, a creative spirit. That's the things that we want to look out for. I wouldn't recommend going back over it until the hand gets a bit lighter. But as you see though, with the minor touch-ups and knowing the a to b so a to b and then a to b a to b and then we can do a to b so you get my drift cleaning it up and knowing the a to b's makes all of the difference a to b here a to b and not to say that this is incorrect because overall i do like the way the tattoo reads it does read nice and just a to b a to b a to B, A to B, and I wouldn't move this fast with a tattoo machine. A to B, A to B, and as you see though, these little things do make up for a better read on the tattoo. And for the shading, I did see that they shaded it as well. Bear with me, A to B. Overall though, I do like this design yet again. For shading, I did see that they shaded it as well. And it's so sh again, shading is fully subjective. It's very, very hard to say that this is a correct way to shade. But for me specific, I would have just simply, and this is just making the streaks in the way that I would have done it. I would have shaded that way. And then right here, I would have not have touched the rim. I would have left a negative space like you see right here. And over here, I would have done the same thing. And I believe that it was shaded in that manner if I'm correct. I chose to go with this one because there is more opportunity for insight here as opposed to the shaded as shading is fully subjective. And then for right here, I would have approached it like that. And this is just one of the many ways that I would have approached it. As I'm doing this, I can think of another way where I would have started from different angles and gone different ways to each their own and this is what I would have done with a three round liner again which is 100% subjective but you get my drift that's essentially how I would have shaded and the same thing with the leaves here I would have left a negative space around here like so And overall, that's how I would have read the tattoo. I mean, granted, this is 
you're gonna be more shaded but you get my idea with that that's how i would have approached it overall though i do like the tattoo great work i recommend to maybe want to get some practice skin and practice on practice skins and just use them for scratching meaning where you just pull lines practice circles practice shading techniques testing out new needles and stuff like that i would recommend doing so i recommend that for everyone even professionals um there's no, you know, there, you can't go wrong when you have practice skins available to you so you can practice whether you're a beginner or a professional. I do appreciate you submitting. Thank you very, very much. Should you have any questions, by all means, feel, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I appreciate you submitting yet again. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Now, this next one is submitted by Sosa X, and this one was done on human skin as well as you can see. And again, I'm never condoning unsafe tattooing. I don't know how people are tattooing on their end. So I would like to assume that they're practicing correctly. Now for this right here, this looks as though that they are genuinely practicing on skin, which is something that I do not recommend simply because of stuff like this, because you can see the line is coming out a bit more. The lines, the tapering in and out is not well done. So how I would go about doing this is I would simply let this heal and master what I'm doing on fake skin. I would definitely practice fake skin and then simply just go back over everything. Bear with me here. And touch everything up. Let me make this a little bit smaller. That's too small. And this sort of tattoo definitely requires some precision in terms of pulling good, nice, steady, saturated lines. Now, I'm not sure the voltage or even the type of machine that was used for this specific tattoo. But I would definitely recommend to find a comfortable voltage and hand speed with a good needle depth because you need to find um we need to be consistent when we pull the lines so that way the lines are nice and saturated and i'm going to do a little a letter here or two and just kind of shed some light as i go but as you can see though pulling the lines and having nice steady consistent saturated lines makes for all of the difference as you can see, if we zoom in here, as you can see though, right here, there's still some natural skin showing. So saturating everything as well is crucial. And that's something that I'm still working on along my way. Now, these lines are definitely a bit choppy. So again, when it fully heals, I would just recommend practicing on fake skin, getting the lines a bit or I'm sorry, getting lining a bit more corrected. And I do have videos on how to improve line work or how I go about doing that. And, um, you know, go ahead and go, go back over it. And a pulling lines definitely takes a level of confidence. But as you see though, overall, as I pull the lines here, you're just cleaning it up and it's, it's i'm not saying it's a horrible tattoo it's not a bad tattoo just the line work isn't great at all we need to correct that the foundation is there so this is actually an easy fix i'll probably fix this with maybe let's say a nine round liner a standard nine round liner is what i would fix this with and go back over everything so that way when i get to the m these little tight spots it wouldn't be so difficult to you know uh do that spot right there but Nonetheless, that's how I would go about doing that. I would just uh, recommend, since this is going to be pretty much lining, practice my line work a little bit more and then go back over when I have a bit more confidence and when I'm able to pull more so one pass lines. I, I genuinely appreciate you submitting. If you have any questions, so say X, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. The next up is going to be Lily Graham. And for this one, there was two submitted. I'm actually gonna do this one here for this video. Now for this one, it's definitely not a bad tattoo at all. Bear with me, I'm trying to find a consistent color here. I do like the overall look. It definitely reads nice. 
However, little spots like this right here kind of give it away that these necessarily weren't one pass lines as you can see in between right here. So I would just recommend when we get more comfortable, more fluid, to go over and clean up the lines when we get you know are able to pull nice comfortable one pass lines i don't encourage anyone to practice on themselves i definitely don't encourage that i do understand that everyone starts somewhere so that's why i'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't be doing this or anything like that that's not the vibrations or energy that i want to give off to people i just don't want to have that approach However, as you can see though, when everything is cleaned up and when we do, and again, this is on an iPad, I understand that, but when we do clean it up and get these nice saturated one pass lines, it reflects in the read of the tattoo. And I've been talking about the read of the tattoo in terms of people looking at your tattoo, strangers, whoever may see your tattoo when you're out, you know, in your regular or in your day-to-day uh, -day life, in your regular day-to-day -day life, so that's how I always look at tattoos. So when I'm just out and about, you know, living my regular day-to-day -day life, I'm always thinking of people and how the tattoo is going to look, which is why I'm always interested in the form that, you know, if I'm doing a specific sleeve, I pay attention to the form of the sleeve and kind of even more so the personality of the person, all of that matters. But as you see though, cleaning up this specific spot does make all of the difference. Let me see if I can actually get it here. And as you see right here, these lines, this one right here, be cleaned up as well I don't see blowouts I don't see any apparent blowouts either right here or that are readily available to us but overall though this is a nice tattoo great work I genuinely appreciate the submission here let me clean up this last line over here. So as you see, look, cleaning up a few of these lines, it's overall looking great. It's reading nice. The tattoo read nice to begin with, but that's what I would recommend doing like this right here as well. And again, I could go on all day and just, you know, do this because this is actually kind of fun. But you get my idea. That's what I would recommend. Focus on, again, pulling lines. I'm seeing here that a lot of this is just resulting in line work. Shading is going to be fully subjective. And that's a whole completely different conversation. But right now, for lining, I would genuinely recommend getting fake skins to practice lining. And I would just do that until I developed a perfect consistency or a perfect alignment between depth, speed, and voltage, as that's pretty much the essentials to pulling great saturated lines. But overall, though, you can see the difference. It is a great tattoo from the start. As you can see right here, if we were more comfortable pulling the lines, we would probably would have A and B it to A and B and whip our way out there which is where practice and development come into play and as you see there again there's many ways to approach it overall great work i genuinely pre appreciate your submission should you have any questions at all feel free to drop them in the comments down below this is a great tattoo or this is a very very nice tattoo that i like i enjoy flowers i'm a very uh, i enjoy doing flower tattoos so this one is one of my personal favorites here let's go ahead and proceed the next is going to be submitted by Drew Inc. or Drew Torres Inc. Forgive me. So this is going to be submitted by Drew Torres Inc. Thank you for your submission, Drew Torres Inc. Let's go ahead and proceed here. I'm going to zoom in so that way I can match the pigment here. Now for Drew Torres Inc., this is a nice design. This is a more complex design. So this one will take a specific skill set to go ahead and master. I'm not sure if I see a little bit of blowouts here up close. That looks like it may be blown out. I can't be too sure. It looks a bit blown out, but I'm not here to go ahead and just pinpoint that. Shading would actually pretty much essentially cover that as well. Now, there's many ways to approach this tattoo. And as you can see right here, the line work is a bit like this is right here essentially is hitting the epidermis so i would essentially approach it with the line work by simply 
cleaning up the lines accordingly and doing that again would require just a bit of practice patience and you have to have everything aligned you have to have the right voltage speed and depth so that way everything aligns and the lines come out nice and consistent and you're not hitting that hypodermis it looks as though it was the hypodermis was hit a bit here on this specific tattoo which is something we want to avoid at all costs but again i'm not here to smack anyone's wrist or anything weird like that what i am going to do is just shed light and basically try and show a difference here before and after on the points that i'm trying to make and talk about rather than say i would have done this i would have done this i'm going to show you all here what i would have done now everything is nice i mean the design is nice i do like the design i'm a fan of like dragon type i'm a fan of floral tattoos as well now as you see the cleaning up the lines right there does make for a different read so like right here for example this line was pulled multiple times right here that you know could be covered up with a, a different needle configuration should we choose to go back and redo that but again that's where confidence comes into play i would have a and b and then stretch the skin and then pulled the line prior to putting the ink into the skin so the same for this a b one, two, and then three right here. Stretch the skin as much as I can. And then I would have pulled the tattoo line like so. You get my drift. And then I would have just kept repeating the process. And again, I can't be too sure because I don't have the concave of the individual. However, one thing that I've noticed for sure is that the stretching of the skin is a natural motion that comes upon me tattooing. But as you see though, I'm using a bit of a bolder configuration as opposed to what was used originally here and i do like the way that that looks so that's what i how i would have approached it i would just simply take my time pulling the lines this right here area looks blown out and it may have been from this line right here i can't be too sure or it could have been to this person bruises easy but i'm almost certain that that may be a blowout Now, as you see though, doing that, it's looking better. The design looks great. So that's how I would approach it. I would just simply go back over, or if I were to do, if you are doing another touch-up session, just take your time and line everything correctly. As you see, these lines are a bit more better. Like this area right here is a nice area. So that area, that consistency right there could have been everywhere and the tattoo would have looked great. There would have not have been many blowouts. So again, I do recommend that we practice on fake skins. I highly, highly encourage people to practice on fake skins. I always think to myself, even um, when I'm five, 10 years into tattooing, I'm going to still practice on fake skin and I'm going to have them available just to keep my skills uh, skill sets sharp. Uh, I want my skill sets upon tattooing to be as sharp as they can be and having fake skin will allow me to do that at you know at will here and this nice this line right here is pulled nice as well but again it may have been blown out as you see though everything is great uh the tattoo overall it reads nice it read nice but the blowouts are really apparent here so as you see the overall that's how i would have approached that area and then shading as well like i would have just shaded in this area right here and then I would have shaded this area right here. And I'm using dots to demonstrate. And then I would have done that all the way down. So that's this area right here, all the way down the scales. And then same thing for the roses. I see that you started a bit of shading right here. This one, the shading could have you know gone that way. You could even throw lines in there like so. And the only thing that really gets me on this specific tattoo is the blowouts. It's a, it appears to be a lot of them. Nonetheless though, the design is a nice design. Execution, I feel could have been a bit better had we had, you know, a bit more experience, maybe some lining, some 
maybe even like before we started the tattoo session to have lion for an hour or so with some practice skin or something and then have gone into it i remember i used to do that as well but overall though this is a great tattoo this is a nice tattoo this is excuse me here this is um not a bad tattoo again just these blowouts are pretty every and then right here too like um a to b that's why a to b is very important again though this will happen to me too in the midst of tattooing a to b a to b and this part the, the client could have flinched and it may have scared you you know anything could have happened so i'm not here to say oh this is bad this is bad this is not by any means bad uh, I do hope that I'm shedding some sort of light for you. If there's any advice that I would have to give or critiques is would be to practice uh, finding a consistent voltage with a steady needle speed and depth. Fi I think finding that depth, working on that depth a bit more is going to get you pulling nice clean lines because I can see that the lines right here, there's potential when you're line pulling. Like this line right here is pulled nice, but again, there's a bit of blowout behind it. So we overshot the skin there and how thick it was. But overall though, nice work, very, very good. As you can see, me going over it, it does great. It, it, it looks nice, the design is there. That's how I would do it. I don't want to spend too much time and you know do each and every design. But that's how I would do it. And like this part right here, these can also be cleaned up right here. By simply A, B, A and B. And knowing where the depth is, is super important. I genuinely appreciate you and your submission. Should you have any questions at all, by all means, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'm gonna do my best to assist you. Yet again, thank you Drew Torres Inc. for sub your submission, I appreciate you. The next submission is going to be from Liberty Air Brushing. Now for this specific one, let me get a more closer pigment tone here. So this is not a bad tattoo at all. This is a more complex tattoo than I've seen here due to all the details and everything. For this right here, me personally, I would have went with a smaller configuration for this part. That's just me though, um, everyone's different. I'm not sure if this was done with a rotary or coil, but cleaning up tattoos always makes for a better appearance. Overall though, as you can see, like what I would clean up, like example right here in this area, having one fluid clean motion in your lines makes for a better read in your tattoo. So as you see, let's, let's focus on this area right here. So it'll be before and then after. So having one fluid clean line makes for a better read in the tattoo. It makes for a better quality of a tattoo. So that's what I would really focus on. Again, though, this is a more advanced design that I have seen. Execution, I feel, could have been a bit more. Like just taking your time, A, B, like so. Very, very nice. And again, the design itself is cool. I do like this design. The shading right here is a bit harsh. I would have used a different gray wash. It's just my approach. Uh, let's see here. Again, you know, having those nice fluid clean lines is a way that I would like to go here or for all my tattoos. And for those who know, my tattoos are densely line based, which is why I'm very, very big on line work and shading as well. I approach shading, I mean, nine times out of 10 with a three round liner stipple approach. And it just, it just depends on the tattoo design itself. But overall, that's the configuration I'm using. And as you can see right here though, lining the tattoo and defining, defining the lines a bit more does make for a better read on the tattoo right here. And as you can see right here, the lines are a bit lighter. So the lines went from light and then we completely just went to the epidermis and then went back in right here. So little things like that is what I look for. Attention to detail. The details in a tattoo are crucial. We always wanna take our time when applying details. But as you can see though, that's how I would approach it. It's just simply doing minor touch-ups to the design itself with a more steady and consistent hand with a more comfortable voltage and hand speed and depth there. But as I do these minor touch-ups here, 
you can see it does make for a better read on the tattoo now again though i'm not here to say that this is right wrong uh this is something that you shouldn't nothing like that i don't want to come off as anything other than helpful because that's what i'm genuinely trying to do i'm genuinely trying to shed some insight and show you what it would look like from essentially another artistic perspective so i hope that i'm not you know making anyone feel bad or rubbing anyone the wrong way upon my creative approach here this is just the way that i'm looking at it this is just the way that i view it here but as you see that's how i go about that's how i'm thinking about this tattoo right here and these are just things when i start getting to this these are just things that stand out right away is just simply the line work i feel even just going back in and simply doing line work would make for a better read on the tattoo you can even add a little details here and there should you choose to do so like little you know i mean that, that's subjective you don't have to do that I would recommend just simply focusing on the lining and defining all of that. Overall though, as you see, it does make for a better read. And let me do some of the teeth right here. Now, as you see though, just going back and really defining everything with a bit more confidence with your needles or with a needle configuration similar to the size that you've already used, I think would make for a better read and give the t or add quality to the tattoo. And then these, you can even like bring lines down like that. But you get my drift. You can kind of see there what I'm trying to say. And I hope my points do get across here. Should you have any questions at all, by all means, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And I'm always going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. And I genuinely do appreciate your submission, Liberty Airbrushing. Very cool design, very cool tattoo. I hope that this helps you yet again. And anyone else who's consuming or watching this video, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. Next on the list, we have Speed Chambers. Now, this tattoo right here is actually pretty clean there's not much that i would have to say about this or that i would critique the only thing is right here the line work i would recommend trying to find a comfortable position to one pass it now there's some ridges out here i don't know if the needle wobbles or how that happens there but this is a bit of a thicker tattoo i feel if we were to go back and kind of just clean up the lines not that the lines aren't clean because the lines are technically clean the lines are there it'll make for a better appearance overall and i like where you put the shading i like how you apply the shading i wouldn't uh change the shading either the shading is actually pretty nice uh i actually enjoy it a lot but that's the idea that's what i would do i would just uh, practice the lining and to make consistent flowing lines where i see fit as you see right here and that's basically how i would approach it like essentially right here with the circle as well just kind of clean everything up as best as i possibly can and again i am doing this with the ipad so i hope i don't come off as easier said than done however this is essentially though the only thing that comes to mind here is just little cleanups like so nothing major or anything like that overall this is a really great tattoo i do like this tattoo well done it's a really cool simple design i think this is more on the traditional side simply because of the bold lining but as you see right there that's essentially how i would approach it just cleaning it up uh, drop in the comments down below what you all use for these tattoos if you use round liners round shaders and as you can see right here i believe that this was maybe done multiple times so you want to be careful when you're going over multiple times you want to do it in a way that it's not going to be noticeable upon presentation 
Always think about presentation as well. And that goes back to if I was wearing this tattoo, would I like it? But as you see though, just simple adjustments like that make for a much cleaner tattoo right here as you can see. Should you have any questions at all, by all means, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below and I'm gonna do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. And that goes for everyone. If anyone has a question, please, by all means, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I will do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. So there you all have it. That's my approach for this specific design right here. So yet again, Speed Chambers, thank you for your submission. Next on the list is Adrian Nonia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Nonia, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that. I have to be pronouncing that incorrectly. So forgive me if uh, I slaughtered that there. Let's go ahead and proceed accordingly. I'm going to find a tone that's similar to this here. I personally love roses. So for this one right here, and this one's Adrian Nonia. I'm not sure, again, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, please forgive me. For this right here, as I can see, the design is nice. I love the design. For, right off the bat, for these specific leaves right here, how I would approach these specific, this may be a little too big, is these right here would actually look nice with a solid feel as they almost are just with a more cohesive uh, a co more cohesive feel as you see right there there's a lot of spots in between like right here as well that's stuff that you want to pay attention to upon tattooing so let's say if I were to touch up this area and the lines as well as you see they're a little bit wobbly so focus on the A to B find a comfortable voltage and hand speed and find a good needle depth that or the needle depth is going to be something that is developed like that's basically where the dermis is that's where the ink is going to live i can't necessarily teach you where it's at but i can show you what to look for and how to get the ink into the dermis but again i can't teach you essentially where it is at but right here as you see i'm just doing some minor adjustments just doing some minor cleanups here to the design at hand and as you see though, off the bat with the nice consistent movements, we do get a bit of a better flow. Uh, bear with me. I wonder how I would be able to color that in. Well, as you see though, that's basically how I would approach it. And then I would color all of this in right here. One color and then leaving it a bit lighter right here on this end right here so that way it doesn't clash with this specific part so we just don't have two black leaves right here that's how i would do it like that and then just blend it right there and then do the same thing with this one but this one i would do it all the way black or all the way whatever color or the shade that you were using a very dark tint essentially if you're using black black would work as well black would look nice I just matched the shading to the picture tint here, to the pictures that y'all sent in. So as you see, that's how I would approach that right here. I'm not sure I like that without the shade right here. I'm just gonna try and just mimic some shading real quick right here. So that's basically how I would approach it like so. And then for the lines though, little things like that do make for all of the difference. And like right here as well, this is a bit light. So as you can see right here in this spot, the line cut out, I would just recommend again, A and B -ing it. And knowing where your A and B is so that way you can pull a nice full consistent line. I do love floral designs. I'm a fan of the design here execution it gave could a little bit better by simply sticking with the practical fundamentals and again i'm still practicing everything myself like every time i do a tattoo i have to constantly remind myself to slow down 
I just naturally want to draw the way I'm drawing right now. And that's something that I'm also working on as well. And as you see, I'm just doing touch-ups where I feel they should be. And as you see though, it does start coming to life as you start doing that. I did adjust this little area as you all saw. I wonder if the points would be more apparent. Should I do this part right here? But overall though, you can see the little adjustments, the little tune-ups that I'm making right here, bringing life and more dimension to this specific tattoo right here. And I'm trying to shed as much light as I can because again, I'm not, I don't have much to say because I'm not here to say it's just a bad design or you know, I'm just trying to shed light on the technical approach because that's what you all are really asking information about, not so much the design or the capabilities. You're asking me how this is done so I can shed light on the technical aspect as best I can here in this video. So as you see though, just these little touch-ups, it does make for all of the difference within this specific tattoo right here. Uh, I do recommend if this is skin still available to you, get the same configuration and go back in and find a comfortable voltage, find a comfortable hand speed that you could align with the perfect needle depth as well upon pulling lines. And I do have videos on needle depth and pulling lines. I have videos on all of that. But should you still have any questions at all about anything that I'm saying right now, by all means, please drop it in the comments below and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Let me do this last adjustment right here. So as you see the overall making these minor adjustments does make for an improvement on the specific design right here. I don't wanna take up too much time and do every design in you know full, but overall, I do love this design. I'm a big fan of floral. Thank you for your submission. I genuinely appreciate it, Adrian. Thank you very much. And again, should you have any questions, drop them below. And on the last one, this one is going to be submitted by Mertash Shadmir. And forgive me if, again, I'm mispronouncing these names. I do apologize. I'm genuinely doing my best in pronunciation. So let's just dive right on into this one. This is a nice and fun design. I'm going to zoom in and try and match the tone of the ink used here. So for this specific design, again, uh, I just see a lot of uh, people or issues right now for here. Is, I mean, the biggest issue that I saw is just the best way to put it is line work. Line work is the biggest issue here. I think, that, and again, though, there's many variables that go into line work, which is why I can't say do this and then do this and then do this and do this. That's not how tattooing works. What you would need is a certain amount of confidence to go ahead and pull more steady and consistent lines. So as you see though, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some touch-ups where I would do some, like right here, for example, the line is a bit inconsistent. I would want to take my time and even these practice skins that you all submitted, you can go back over them and obviously you can't go back over human skin but you can go back over these practice skins and adjust accordingly as I state. Or, you know, take what you want and leave what you don't throughout this video. I encourage you all to do that. But as you see though, I'm touching up the light bulb and right here, as you see, it looks as though these were passed multiple times and when they were, they weren't consistent. So all of that you can simply remove from the tattoo by going back over it with a steady and consistent line. Now moving front here. You get the idea. So that's basically how I would approach that. And you can see the difference there with the steady and consistent line and this is a great design this is not a bad tattoo at all when i started tattooing I, I went for bigger designs like this as well i went straight to big designs i didn't really do small designs until i did a micro tattoo and then i fell in love with doing micro tattoos so i love doing micro tattoos now but as you see though just cleaning up these lines just one consistent line a consistent flow providing that basically what these consistent lines are and why I'm talking about pulling consistent lines is because this is basically going to add 
quality to the tattoo. When people see that tattoo, strangers look at it, the tattoo is gonna read well. People are gonna look at it and they're gonna see that uh, nice and crispy line work. And then the same thing for right here. Granted, I can do this on the iPad and make one straight line. However, if I was pulling this line on the tattoo, I would definitely just do it in sections and then taper in and out to the best of my ability. This right here is very difficult. Like there's very little room for error on this specific design right here, at least in terms of the triangle. It's a very bold design. And as you see though, um, doing consistent lines right here on that line prior, there was a needle streak right here. So let me show you all. So as you see, this is the line that I put in there, but the line before it had a needle streak. So the depth wasn't quite correct or the voltage and hand speed wasn't aligned either. Again, I can't tell you what was wrong specific because I don't know what machine was used. And even if I did know the machine that was used, I doubt that I would be able to tell you what was necessarily going wrong unless I'm right there, like real time watching you as you tattoo. So as you see though, I'm just touching up where I see fit and basically just trying to shed some light for you. Overall though, again, I'm a big fan of this design. I'm a big fan of any floral designs. I love floral tattoo designs. I love dragon designs, uh, snake designs, owl designs. I love, all, I love Mandela's as well. But as you see right here, I'm just going back in with a very practical approach as I have been. Every approach that I've taken for all of these tattoos, the critique that I'm giving back is just very practical stuff. Like pretty much everybody is just focusing on that line work, getting nice, crispy, saturated lines each and every try. Like the impact that it also has on the tattoo as well is everything, uh, the quality when we're pulling nice, consistent, saturated lines goes up and it does again make an impact it makes all of the difference so i'm just trying to cover some spots that stand out to me here overall though you see where i'm going with this specific design and everything you see my thought process behind it and that's the idea that's how i would approach that and same thing with up here because everything the shading as well kind of clashes so with this specific design you can take this specific skin that you're using and then kind of go back in over everything and take your time pulling the lines back over the existing lines so that way you can get comfortable with pulling steady uh, you know uh, steady lines with a one pass motion there and then right here if i'm reading this correctly that goes into there so like there's a lot going on in this design so even when i make a stencil i always have to know what's going on i can't have a stencil where i'm like i'm just gonna make it up here and make it up there unless it's like clouds or water or something that's like easy to freehand in other than that though i always need to be able to make sense of the stencil and this stencil is a bit busy but as you see though just making these minor little adjustments right here does make for a cleaner tattoo overall though great uh great design great tattoo i genuinely appreciate everyone's submission here everyone who submitted i know it's probably uh, scary or you know something along those lines nerve-wracking to hear me talk about your designs and go over your designs and i hope that i didn't make anyone feel bad or make anyone feel anything negative because my goal again is to not discourage that is not what i am trying to do i'm genuinely trying to help and shed some light and guide people in the best possible direction as I tell you all. So as you see though, doing this though, it definitely does bring life to the tattoo, it brings dimension. And I'm doing as, I'm trying to follow the design as best as I can here, as best as I see it. Again, it is a bit busy for my eyes, specific. But overall though, I'm getting carried away. This one's actually fun. I'm getting carried away with this specific design. As you see right there though, it looks great. This is a very, very nice design. I would just recommend 
trying to you know focus on line work consistency tapering in and out i will i do have videos on line work and how i pull lines i am going to bring a video on tapering in and out so bear with me on that but as you see though everything looks great if you were to go and just do some simple touch-ups like so it'll make the world of a difference as you see right here Yet again, I genuinely appreciate your submission. I genuinely appreciate everyone who has submitted here today. Thank you all very, very much. It genuinely means a lot to me that you all would like to participate in something like this. Should anyone want to participate in the next episode? I may not do 10 every time. Some may be five, some may be a few. But you get the idea. As we go on, we will go ahead and we will do more episodes. We will change them up. They will get more uh, dynamic as we go on. But this is the idea behind it. This is the episodes in a nutshell. Should anyone want to submit any tattoos of theirs, by all means, I highly encourage you to go ahead and submit for the next episode. Go ahead and send your tattoos to yuckmadethis at gmail.com. That's Y-U-C-K. M-A-D-E-T-H-I-S at gmail.com. Yuck made this at gmail.com. I will also include that in the video for you as well. Again, I highly encourage you all to send in more so we can keep these episodes going right here. I hope that you and others that are viewing this can find some insight as to how to better and progress in our craft here. Yet again, should anyone have any questions, drop them below. I also have social media. I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under the same name at Daniel Yuck. D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would genuinely appreciate your support on social media as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You have a great day.